When you meditate, you're trying to find a sense of ease and well-being inside. This is one of the purposes of doing concentration, what the Buddha calls a dwelling for the mind, a place where you can rest, a place where you can gain nourishment on the path. You simply have to be careful that you also have to develop mindfulness and alertness. That's another one of the purposes of doing concentration. The more quiet the mind, the more you'll be able to see what's going on in the mind. And of course, once you have mindfulness and alertness, then you can protect that sense of well-being so it doesn't turn into sleepiness or doesn't turn into delusion concentration. So those two qualities go together. You want to give rise to that sense of well-being, but you don't want it to overcome the mind. So you give the mind work to do. Once there's a sense of well-being with the breath, you think of that well-being spreading around the body. And then you make a survey. Where in the body is the breath still not going well? Where in the body is that sense of ease not willing to flow? What can you do to open things up? And how can you be aware of the whole body all at once? When the mind has work to do in that sense of well-being, then it doesn't turn into delusion concentration. It gets even more quiet, actually, but quiet with a sense of clear awareness, full awareness. This is when the, the mind is ready for the two other purposes of doing concentration, the first of which is to gain different psychic powers, different psychic knowledge, which is optional. A lot of people gain full awakening without having those powers. And then the fourth, though, is to get past your defilements. You need a sense of well-being in the mind in order to fight them off. Because otherwise, they'll tell you that they are the only way to find happiness. And you have to realize, well, there is this other sense of well-being. As the Buddha once said, you may see the drawbacks of sensuality but if you don't have an alternative pleasure to sensuality, such as the pleasure of concentration, then the mind is sure to go back. So don't look down on that sense of well-being. It's an important part of dealing with your defilements. Use it as something to compare. And distraction comes into the mind. And you're going to ask yourself, which is better, the, the ease of the, of, the, of the concentration or the little bit of pleasure you get out of that distraction? And as the ease gets more and more expansive through the body, it gives a stronger and stronger argument against the distractions. Because these distractions, these defilements that come into the mind, they're often dressed like you. They look like you, they sound like you, and because they have been you in the past. So if you're going to cut off your relationship with them, you have to have something really good to offer as an alternative. So at the very least, you've got the alternative of that well-being and concentration. But as you develop the discernment, one, you get the ability to pull out of the defilement. I mean, this is a, an ability that comes from the concentration itself. You sit here with the breath and suddenly find yourself with another thought. You remind yourself, this is not why I was here meditating. You can pull yourself out. Well, you can do the same thing with those defilements. No matter how much they sound like you, and no matter how much they seem like your true feelings, your true desires, you decide you can pull out. You know how to pull out. And that way you can look at the defilement from the outside. That makes it a lot easier to deal with. So concentration is what gives you a place to stand, so that when you step out of those defilements, you have a good, solid place to go to, and not just, not just another defilement. So when they say, watch out for the pleasures of concentration, they're not saying, don't try to attain pleasure in concentration. What they really mean is, 
Don't just let yourself be overcome by the sense of pleasure, and don't get lazy. The pleasure is there, one, to soothe you, to give you, to give you a sense of nourishment, but it's also there to give you a good foundation for the other purposes of concentration, gaining mindfulness and alertness, and also gaining discernment that overcomes your defilements. As John Fung used to say, if you want to be good at meditation, you have to be crazy about it. In which sense, you have to be stuck on the, on the ease of concentration. The mind keeps wanting to come back, come back. That's actually something you, you want to encourage. Because after all, being stuck or addicted to concentration is much better than being addicted to sensuality. With sensuality, sensuality is the cause, as the Buddha points out, people break all the precepts. They can do a lot of harm to themselves, a lot of harm to the world. Whereas if you're stuck on concentration, you, there's no reason to break any of the precepts. There's no reason to get any harm. I mean, there are some slight forms of harm they develop in terms of laziness on the one side, pride on the other side, where you start thinking about how you have concentration and other people don't. But those defilements can be dealt with. And they're much more refined. And how you deal with them? Well, getting more skillful at your concentration, getting more observant, getting more mindful, getting more alert. Remind yourself that you do have these better pleasures. So those three main functions of concentration all go together. We have a pleasant abiding here in the, in the here and now, so that we can give rise to mindfulness and discernment, and so that we can overcome our defilements. So don't look down on the pleasure of concentration. As the Buddha said, one of the things you have respect for is respect for concentration. And when you do, you're right in the presence of Nibbana.